Hi guys, so something you're probably going to hear about a lot over the next number of weeks and months is the Stormont break. Now this is something that was introduced as part of the Windsor framework, which is replacing the Northern Arm protocol. And it's a, it's a tool to allow generally the DUP or to give them the impression that they have a veto over EU law. Now, as you know, Northern Ireland is part of the single market when it comes to goods. And of course, it has to follow EU law in order to maintain that. But what does the Stormont break do? So what it does is it allows members of the Northern Ireland Assembly, in a sense, to pull the break on new EU law. And it's more likely to be used by the DUP or the extreme unionists in the Northern Ireland Assembly. We don't really expect it to be used by Sinn Féin, the SDLP or the Alliance Party. But what does it do? So it says here, according to this flowchart, which is um, which was created by Peter Donaghy, who is a journalist in Belfast, it says here, so a new EU law that the DUP want to veto. So what happens at the beginning of the process? Do uh, at least five other unionist MLAs, members of the Northern Ireland Assembly, also want to veto? So the DUP alone can't do this. They need the support of other parties. Now, the DUP at the moment have 25 members of the, of the, um, of the Assembly. They have 25 representatives. That's not enough. The TUV, which is even a more extreme party than the, than the DUP, just have one. So they would need to have support also from the UUP, so Ulster Unionist Party, which is more moderate, uh, is a more moderate unionist party. So they may be able to pick up a few. Let's say they do. If they don't, well, the law goes into effect in Northern Ireland. But let's say they do. They, they manage to convince a few members of the Ulster Unionist Party to join them in pulling the brake. So what happens next? Well, can the DUP uh, members of the of the assembly show the new law has a significant impact specific to the everyday life that is likely to persist? Um, so can they demonstrate that this is having a, a real impact on people's lives? Now, Peter raises a very valid point here in blue. Who decides if the test is met? Now, according to the documentation presented by the UK government about this, um, it's not specified. So will it be the Secretary of State? Will it be the UK government? Will it be the UK Parliament? I, I Nobody knows. Not yet, anyway. I would be inclined to think it would be the Secretary of State. So they would say, yes, this has, meet, this has meet, met the threshold. Um, if not, then the law goes into effect in Northern Ireland. Let's say it does. Let's say the Secretary of State Secretary of State, if they are the one who decide, decides that it's, um, yes, this is an issue that needs to be dealt with. So the storm and break is applied and the new law is suspended from going into effect. The new law is assessed by the UK-EU Joint Committee. Then according to this flowchart, um, does the UK veto the new law at the Joint Committee? Yes or no. If it's no, it goes into law. If it is, the new law is permanently disapplied in Northern Ireland. Any dispute uh, disputes are not subject to the ECJ oversight and would go to the independent arbitration. Um, this doesn't seem to be exactly true because um, this article here says, what happens if no agreement in the Joint Committee after the break is triggered? After the UK has notified the EU that the break has been triggered, an exchange of views will take place in the Joint Committee, the Joint Committee of course being uh, the European Commission and the UK government working together to implement the protocol on the, implement, uh, on the implications on, of the amended and replacing act for the proper functioning of the protocol. If the parties cannot agree either to add an amended or replacing act or other measures to ensure the proper functioning of the protocol, the EU can take appropriate remedial actions uh, measures as is the case under article 13.4 of the protocol. So what does art 13.4 uh, of the Northern Arm Protocol say? Well, not really much. It just says here at the end, if the Joint Committee has not taken a decision referred to in the second subparagraph within the, a reasonable time, the Union, the European Union here, 
shall be entitled, after giving notice to the United Kingdom, to take appropriate remedial measures. Such measures shall take effect at the earliest six months after the Union informed the United Kingdom in accordance with this, the first subparagraph, but in no uh, event shall such measures take effect before the date on which the newly adopted Act is implemented in the Union. Um, so basically what's happening here is that, yes, the, the DUP can come up with a reason why they think, you know, sausages, <laughs> people are not getting their sausages. Um, the Secretary of State will decide whether that's a valid reason or not. It's more likely the case that they will say, no, that's not a valid reason. But let's say, for example, for the case of uh, something more serious, maybe medicines or something like that, the Secretary of State says yes. And this is me speculating whether it's the Secretary of State, it could be somebody else. If they say yes, then it will go to the Joint Committee. And then the Joint Committee will try and find a way around the problem. This is probably more likely what's going to happen. Not that it will be dis uh, disapplied in Northern Ireland. Now, it could eventually be disapplied in Northern Ireland, but I think there are too many steps and it's going to take a long time before it gets to that stage. So in theory, the DUP could veto EU legislation in Northern Ireland, but in practice, it's probably not going to happen because there are too many safeguards in place. There's the Secretary of State or the UK government representative. And remember, you know, the Tories are on the way out. A new Labour government is going to be much more um, accommodating when it comes to implementing EU law in Northern Ireland. So, and also, um, if we look at the makeup of uh, the Assembly in Northern Ireland, you can see here Sinn Féin, the biggest party, 27, the DUP, 25, Alliance, 17, UUP, 9, SDLP, 8, TUV, 1. And then we have the smaller parties as well. Um, next year, in 2024, the Northern Ireland Assembly will get a vote on um, on the uh, the Northern Ireland Protocol or this new um, framework. And if things stay as they are, it's likely they will support, continue to support the Protocol or the Windsor framework. They will at the moment. There's a majority in support of the Protocol at the moment, and that's unlikely to change at the next election. So the DUP yes, have the possibility, they have the chance to undo some EU law, but it seems unlikely to actually happen. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.